Let's discuss about Git and how it helps us to work with our code. When you create a repository in Git, okay, it is called the master branch. First, you remember this. Like, say I have a new uh, project which has come to create a website or create an app or create anything uh, or create a RPM file uh, for installing in Linux. Say I am a company which creates RPMs. RPM packages for Linux servers so that they can uh, install it in their servers. Okay, like J Jenkins is doing. What it is doing? It is creating a RPM file called Jenkins version number dot RPM, and we are downloading that RPM and installing it. So Jenkins should be having a entire build pipeline where it writes code, where it commits there in the version control, and from there they are compiling it, creating an RPM file and putting it into the repository and we are downloading it from there using wget or yum install and installing it. So that is how it is uh, working for them. So similarly, say we have a project in hand and we will create a repository. So what we do, when we create a new repository in Git, it is called the master branch. Okay any new repository the main branch is called the master branch master branch is where the main code base will reside okay that means this is the code which will enter into the pipeline i mean this code will be checked out into the jenkins pipeline and there it will be compiled and sent to the uh, deployed to the end user or or a staging server or somewhere else so that's the master branch where the main code is there. Now there are some other branches called feature branches. Now what is a branch? Say our main main software product is kept in the master branch in a repository. Now a new feature has to be added in the software. Like the main software is say a web page which is already working and we have kept it in the master branch of the repository. Okay. And now the client has asked us that I want a new page which will have a video uh, fr from YouTube which will show in that page. That was not already in the main website. This is a new feature he has asked for us. Okay. So now what we do, if we start working on that in the master branch, say some developer made some mistake and pushed it into the master branch. So the deployment and as I said, since we have implemented DevOps and everything is automated, so as soon as Jenkins will see that something new has come to the master branch, it will try to put, push it into the pipeline. But since the code is erratic, it might fail in the pipeline. So in order to avoid that, in order to avoid the main master branch to get affected, what people do, they create feature branches or sometimes developers for their own safety they, they are afraid to commit something into the main branch or the master branch what they do they fork out branches creating a new branch is called forking okay so if you fork out a branch that is called a feature branch sometimes people fork out branches for their personal work also say you want to test something in the software you cannot uh, make changes and commit it to the master okay so how do you get the code from the master branch if you check out from the master and if you if you by mistake commit that then it will go back to the master right your your version of the code so for safety you can fork out a branch forking means you create a branch with the same code and if you commit something that commit goes to that branch not the master branch so that is the concept of branching. Branching means you have some code in the master. If you fork out or create a branch, that will be called a feature branch. You can give a name to it. And then you can do your stuff in that branch. Okay. And uh, whatever you commit, it goes to that branch instead of going to the main branch. And now if something works fine in your branch, then you can merge with the master branch later on. If it is fine here, you have tested it, 
in your own Jenkins or anywhere else, and you have uh, uh, you have validated that this is extremely uh, uh, good and uh, working fine, then you can merge, and your code comes back to the master, and so then it goes to the pipeline. So that is how this works. I'll show you how that is done here. Like here, you can see there is a master branch here in this. Let me show you from the beginning. Here you can see repositories. These are various repositories. Backend, this product, backend, that product, compute, charge. These are various products, okay, which are parts of a big software application. Okay. Now, say I am working on this product, SM product. So I go to the repository for that product. So here you can see in the left, this is a repository for this product. Now inside it, here in the source, I can see these are the code for the source. Uh, the, this is the program which I am using. Now this is the master branch. This should be connected to the pipeline. This is the main branch where the product is. Now I am working on implementing this in a Docker container. So what I am doing is I don't want to affect the master branch because sometimes if I do some mistake in the Docker or something, it will reflect in the product and uh, which is not a good thing. So for that I have forked out a branch for myself called Docker Mesos. Inside it, if you see the commits, you can see only I am doing most of the work here. You can see here all this. So what does that mean? These all newer files which I am changing, I have created a branch, you can see two lines here. So in this branch, whatever I am doing in this Docker Mesos branch, that will not go to the master branch. Okay. And later on if I merge it, it will go there and they will find it in the main product. Okay. And here you can okay. I was trying to show you if there is any merge history or not, but it was not there. Like here in active, you have many branches. After some time, if this branch becomes stable, we can merge it in the master branch. When we merge it, here in the merge section, it will show that it has been merged successfully. It's not there here. So that is how it, you can uh, merge this. Okay. That is how Git works. You can create a master branch, commit code directly to it. Then you can create branches and ask individual developers to work on them. Okay. There are some concepts about Git, like say there is a version one of an app, how it works, that is uh, shown in this diagram. Mostly you will find no project is being started from scratch. Okay. Most cases you will see pro uh, projects would be having some basic source code from the beginning and then they come into the stage where they put it into the version control. They do not put just uh, empty project into the version control and then start working on it. Mostly people work on a concept, they get a basic code base running, then they put it into version control. So then the developers check out that code. So that is, uh, that has many uh, terms. Okay. When you check out from a master or a branch, you can call it a clone. In Git, the checking out, checking out means pulling code from the repository to your own system that is called cloning. You can also, as I said, it is called forking means create, creating a branch of something. Cloning means creating a direct copy of something in your own server. That means in Git, it is same as what is in the main branch or the master branch. So if you are cloning a master branch, that means your setup is equal to the master branch. So if you commit something, it will go back to the master branch again. Okay. So uh, that is how the cloning works. And then uh, the developer makes changes to that clone. And uh, after that, if the, some new files are added, there is a command called git add. So that command will add a new file or a new code. 
and then when he commits it, uh, even add does not add it to the repository. Okay, it does not take it back to the repository. It just add, keeps a record that a new file has been added or a new folder has been added. And after that, when the person commits it, it is uh, it goes to uh, the it creates a record that these files have been added and wants to be committed to the uh, main branch to create a version two. Then another command is used called git push. So that will push it to the repository. So when we use the commands, it will be more clearer. Like you clone it first, that means taking the code to your system, making the changes, then you have some commands. If you add some new files, you use git add, git commit, and then you use git push. So it goes back to the repository as a new version. So these are the steps which are followed by the git. Git has another feature called tagging. Like at any point of time, you can tag your code. Like say, in Git or Bitbucket or anywhere, say today I have this code, five files and this license, everything. This code, I am very satisfied with it. Now I want to create a tag that this is my version 1.0. So that can be done. There are certain commands. So what it will do, it will freeze the code. These all files, it will freeze and tag it as a version 1.0. So once that is tagged, here in releases, you can find a version. Here this guy has not tagged anything. If if he would have used a tag command, here you will find that this slack term v1.0. So then what happens? Uh, it, uh, it creates a tag of your software. So you can have a working version. You can do that anytime. Uh, uh, say you have a policy where you tag your software after testing every month. So every month you can release your tag, tagged version.